Welcome everyone. Very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. As per the time zones uh, you're joining in, thank you very much for taking the time uh, joining us on today's session. My name is Justin, and I'm one of the marketing managers at Kelton Tech, and I will be the host for today's session. Joining along with me, I have uh, Mr. Praveen Changani, uh, Director for the Digital Connected Enterprise Business Unit uh, at Kelton Tech. And uh, Praveen will be covering us on today's topic, IBM Integration Buzz, uh, that's IAB version 10.4. And uh, uh, just a quick introduction about Praveen. And uh, Praveen carries over 17 years of experience in the IT industry, and uh, he has a deep uh, experience working in the areas like BPM, BRMS, SOA architecture, and enterprise application integration. And uh, before I pass it on to Praveen, uh, quick uh, house rules that I would like to mention. Uh, for your information, today's uh, webinar uh, is being recorded and uh, will be shared to you individually via email. And uh, uh, the presentation will also be shared uh, uh, along with the recording of today's session. And uh, we also plan to leave uh, five minutes at the end of this session uh, to take down your questions. So if something sp uh, springs to your mind as we are talking, please uh, feel free to drop your questions uh, in the questions pane that you see uh, to the right of to the right side of your screen. Um, so that's it with the housekeeping. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, let's go get started. Uh, Praveen, over to you. Great. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Justin. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Praveen Changani. Thank you in advance for taking the time to join our webinar series and for your interest in IBM's uh, integration bus uh, version 10. I'd just like to take a couple of minutes, if I may, to um, introduce Kelton Tech. Kelton Tech was founded in 1993 uh, and offers complete a complete portfolio of end-to-end -end IT solutions, technology uh, consulting and advisory services in the areas of social, mobile, analytics, cloud, uh, and integration. So these, these may also span into ERP systems and IoT, uh, as well as API management. So uh, we are headquartered in Princeton, New Jersey, and have offices uh, in Chicago, Illinois, Cupertino, California, McLean, Virginia, Ireland, uh, Hyderabad, India, as well as Singapore. So we're a global, global IT uh, services and consulting company. Uh, we're a premier IBM business partner, as well as Software AG, uh, a Microsoft Gold certified partner, uh, and um, most recently, a, a MuleSoft certified partner. Uh, Kelton Tech is publicly listed um, as a company on India's largest stock exchange, BSC. We are um, ISO 9001, as well as CMMI Level 5 certified. So Kelton Tech has been recognized as, quote, an emerging IT company of the year. And we were recently awarded by Deloitte uh, the India Fast 50, which is a prestigious award for being best in class uh, technology providers in the integration space. Um, so that's uh, a little bit of introduction um, for Kelton Tech. Um, and uh, we are over 1,500 employees and, and growing rapidly. Uh, and so, you know, we, we serve our clientele is typically anywhere from the, the born digital companies, the startups, uh, as well as, you know, the Fortune 500 companies. So we work very hard to earn the trust of our customers and then keep them happy by doing the best work of our lives. Um, this slide speaks to the notion of how uh, Kelton Tech uh, and the Digital Connected Enterprise team, who is uh, sponsoring this webinar today, uh, is concerned with um, the, the recent trends in the industry and allowing customers to take advantage of all the latest advances in technology. So, if you look at the middle of the slide, um, the digital connected enterprise focuses on really uh, harnessing, uh, you know, the integration aspects, whether it's API strategy and management, enterprise integration, analytics, BPM, you know, artificial intelligence, what, what have you, 
uh, and, and then allowing uh, our customers to seamlessly connect uh, to the backend systems of record and, and core IT functions such as perhaps uh, SAP, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, at the top of the slide, you'll see here that um, these are some of our core services we offer to our customers, business IT strategy and planning, uh, enterprise reference architecture, IT uh, application, as well as portfolio management, governance, uh, and then certainly uh, digital tech uh, trends and, and design thinking. Um, this uh, slide now focuses a little bit more deeper as far as what our offerings are from the Digital Connected Enterprise Business Unit. Um, so we have three different, three big teams really at Kelton Tech. One is a Digital Transformation Business Unit, a Digital Connected Enterprise Business Unit, and um, a, an Enterprise Solutions Business Unit. But really all of those three teams uh, have a very core set of offerings that, that uh, enable them to do, uh, to, to help um, impact the customer's business uh, and give them the best possible customer experience from, from their different domains. From the connected enterprise domain, we offer, uh, as you can see, uh, digital transformation and enterprise architecture strategy and advisory services, APIs, uh, we certainly first class um, integration using multiple paradigms such as API, services-oriented architecture, or core ESB application integration. Uh, everything from strategy to enablement services and building centers of excellence at, 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 um, at, at customer locations. Um, down below that, we are uh, heavily invested in uh, digital process automation, um, business process management, RPA, which is robotic process, uh, um, ro RPA, robotic process automation solutions uh, alongside business workflows, rules, analytics, and dashboards. And then further down from that, you have blockchain uh, using a Hyperledger fabric uh, from, um, and then in-memory solutions for high throughput such as uh, web series, extreme scale, uh, AI such as Watson, uh, Watson-based APIs and integration, analytics, whether it's in the traditional space in Cognos, SBSS, or Watson-based analytics, uh, IoT using Watson's IoT on the Bluemix platform, and big data solutions, um, whether it's your traditional Hadoop, Hive, or, or giving our customers, um, you know, enterprise data architecture services, you know, using master data management techniques or uh, you know the, the, the latest in data lake architecture etc uh, we also have cloud enablement options that we provide to our customers uh, routing into bluemix or or other platform providers uh, hybrid it and SaaS integration uh, and hybrid infrastructure services uh, and last but not least infrastructure modernization services continuous integration continuous deployment uh, and DevOps services, um, you know, that, that we offer, we, we have centers of excellence that focus on producing the best uh, DevOps uh, scenarios for your particular business environment and technology environment. Uh, and uh, so some of the products that are featured there might be uh, Urban Code, uh, you know, and, and, and product, uh, a family of products in, in that uh, framework. As well as finally, um, and we also provide to our customers a great uh, feature, which is annual maintenance support, agree support agreements. And this allows, um, it's really more of a managed services model where, you know, if a customer has a certain set of products that they would like, um, you know, annual maintenance on and tickets, uh, things of that sort, uh, we, we provide uh, services and we do it on a, on a global model. So. I just wanted to get that, um, you know, share a little bit of detail on what our core portfolio from the Digital Connected Enterprise team is. And very proud of the, the hard work that our team does uh, from the DCE group. This is a list of, uh, partial list of our customers by industry. As you can see, a lot of these are household brand names uh, and in various industries, so we're multifaceted. Um, our, our motto is that we are technology agnostic, but at the same time, uh, you know, we have, we have a deep expertise in various technology domains uh, and 
but the way we take a look at it is it, really we are using technology as more of an enabler uh, and we're highly focused on uh, solving business problems and pain points uh, within the lens of an industry vertical. So that allows us to focus on not just uh, traditional integration um, and migrations, but also look at what our customers are trying to do next with their business models and find out new opportunities for revenue generation and, and help build and extract those, those models for them. So uh, a lot of expertise in retail, manufacturing, energy and utilities, um, financial services, and, and a whole host of others. But just wanted to quickly share uh, some of our prestigious and valued customers. Uh, and that's that. Um, in terms of technology partnerships, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we, we've been in business uh, for you know, almost 25 years now, and we've been an IBM business partner uh, for you know, over 20 years. So we are very famil familiar with you know, all, just about all of the IBM product lines, the, the very mature product line, ranging from all the way from you know, MQ series to web Series application server, to uh, business process manager, to operational decision server, and you know the the context of today's discussion, which is more related to the enterprise service bus or IBM's integration bus version 10. Also partners with uh, Software AG, Web Methods, uh, MuleSoft, and SAP. Okay, so now let's uh, let's get right into it. Um, one of the reasons why you know, we are having this um, discussion more and more often. Whoops, excuse me. Apologies. Um, one of the reasons we're having this discussion um, more and more often is, you know, what we're seeing is in, in terms of what the customer is, is experiencing and what they are, what they're demanding is they want a much more compelling customer experience, right? So transforming that customer experience is really at the heart of what we are trying to do in, in the integration space, in the digital transformation space. And these digital technologies are changing um, th these customer interactions with new business models and processes, with new rules uh, that were essentially unimaginable only a few years back. So you have to ask yourself, you know, and businesses, industry practitioners, um, business leaders, and CIOs are asking themselves, are we finally able to hear the voice of our customers and sort of, you know, escape, uh, if you will, the, the narrow lenses of just surveys and focus groups? Well, social media lets you do that. Uh, do we have our end customers and our clients, are we continuing to engage with them in such a way that our brand stands out? Uh, and can you continue to engage uh, and give your clients that engagement uh, on the move? Well, mobile, mobile computing lets you do that. Do you know where your customers physically are? Um, and can you perhaps send them incentives or promotions and things of that sort, or give them services depending on positions? Well, geolocation lets you do that. So it's all about, you know, sort of making better predictions so that you have a truly personalized experience. And uh, so you, you know, you do that in, in the form of um, incorporating a lot of your analytics, right? So your customer analytics plays a big role in how you actually make those changes. Uh, but that's why it, it's essential to have your applications, your devices, um, your, your networks and your services or your APIs be much more connected. And what you will see is that that begins to, um, if it ties well into your business process architecture, you will have a very compelling experience and will be able to respond faster to competitive threats, uh, compliance regulations, things of that sort. So the better uh, you are connected, quote unquote connected, uh, the better customer experience you you will you will eventually have, and you'll be able to get new opportunities uh, and drive uh, more revenue. So th that's really the the basic that's the crux of the argument around integration, 
and why things ought to be connected. But now the question is, is how are we going to get all this connected? So, so why is integration actually needed? And you start to ask um, you know, yourself, well, we've come up through over the years and we have, uh, you know, we've, we've seen, we've grown through uh, client server protocols, we've grown through two tier architectures and three tier architectures, uh, you know, evolving to the point now where um, you could potentially write an application that connects and that, that helps your business adapt, but can you do that fast enough? And are you actually having um, a programmer write an application that makes certain coding changes only to then have it be changed six months down the road or even sooner perhaps? And can they, can they do that effectively in, in a proper software development life cycle and have IT be much more responsive to business? So um, that's where integration comes in. The need for integration is getting these multiple endpoints connected in a much more seamless uh, and um, operational way than ever before. And uh, so, but, and doing it in such a way that you are rapidly, you know, you're doing it in such a way within the context of those rapidly evolving integration requirements. So that not only means uh, business models, it means your application platforms, things of that sort. So mobile things, cloud applications, and much more traditional endpoints such as databases, as you might expect, are kicking out this, you know, data at an incredible late, uh, rate. Um, and in lots of different formats as well. So different applications and devices and database platforms are kicking out these different um, format, uh, format, format data points. So um, those, and, and different communication protocols as well. So hence there is much more, um, a need to have a powerful integration technology such as IBM's integration bus um, in order to be able to talk to those different multiple endpoints and ensure that the right amount of data is being passed at the right point with the right transformation that might be needed, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the, the need we've just discussed, uh, the pain point uh, and the impact on customer business uh, as well as why integration itself is needed. Now let's talk a little bit about um, traditional integration versus kind of the, the hybrid integration model that we're starting to see. So in order to understand, right, the, this, this contrast and the competition, we need to understand the scope we're comparing against. And, you know, the hybrid integration space is a significant expansion in scope from what we are used to in traditional integration. And, and um, the, the primary sense, if, if you will, with integration is, is really it's going hybrid. So it's the need to break down these um, multiple barriers between what we do in the cloud and what we do on premise. Uh, because one thing we understand is that there is, there, are, there is a lot of legacy applications and mission critical systems which uh, may not have the, the, the most prettiest or handsome interfaces but they get the job done and they do it very well. So do you go about taking an approach in IT strategy where you uh, basically rebuild all those applications which could take years and put you behind the curve or do you repurpose them and leverage uh, you know, more of a hybrid um, integration connectivity uh, and allowing you to get the most out of those applications but then still continuing to now going forward at least building applications which are much more purposeful towards the needs of, of customers and, and, the and the changes in, in um, the, the business domain. So the, the, the other key difference is, if you will, is new audiences we are, you know, playing to, you know, integration is unlike in the back in the day is no longer kind of this low level practice we used to have in the back office, right? The line of business is aware of it and they want to be able to, in, in some respects, do it themselves. So we have this notion, and if you look at the slide, we have this notion of central IT, who we know, you know, has all the integration tools uh, that look like they would in a central IT, and in a, they're, it's sort of their traditional territory, and, and they excel in it. They're very good at, you know, that sort of team, we're, we're very good at what we do, and we have built all these applications using uh, a lot of different uh, 
you know, technology paradigms, whether it's BPM and or traditional integration. Shadow IT, on the other hand, every company has it. This this group is more tech is basically consists of people that are a little bit more technical minded and they work on the line of business department. They're the power users, I in in from my perspective. And they, you know, they may very well be coding as well, uh, but it's a little bit more uh, natural for them, I think, to be able to code in cloud native type applications and, and probably maybe some open source that they can kind of get under the radar, if you will, of central IT, the first group I talked about. And then last uh, but not least, the, the, the third group is the citizen integration group. And then there are, you know, one would argue that there are very simple integrations that anybody should be able to set up, right? So if you're trying to set up a simple integration between, you know, an application and perhaps Salesforce or um, SAP, uh, you know, th th an argument could be made that a citizen integrator um, could should be able to do that and that you would not need a, a central IT. That's the perspective of the citizen integrator. And that's why uh, as we evolve in this in this space, um, that's that's what we have to keep in mind is what can we um, continue to do and harness with this evolving integration space, and how do we really contrast traditional integration versus hybrid integration? Okay. So let's, uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, so so IBM integration bus, right? Why do you specifically need this? Well. Your business likely has a lot of applications, uh, all performing a, a business function or some critical, um, maybe some critical function, some less so, some more so. So in order to maximize the value that you need to be able to, as I mentioned prior, connect these in a much more seamless way. But but if you know, but all of these systems, um, whether they are off the shelf applications. That are packaged or you know applications or devices or their homegrown apps remember they communicate in different ways so uh, we have to be able to converge at some point and say we've we've got to come up with an approach that's feasible going into the future and a forward-looking uh, technology agenda that that is comprised of IT becoming a much more um, embedded function of, of business itself and not being like two different um, layers, if you will, and sort of having this big wall that we have traditionally had over the years. So um, I'm not going to go into and read all the, the, the different bullet points, but as you can see, um, and this, this PowerPoint presentation will be shared with you at the end of this webinar, but as you can see, there is a business need. There are certain business problems um, that that we that IBM Integration Bus speaks to, and then the solution is that you know that you get to avoid rewrites, simplify maintenance. It adds flexibility, uh, provides insight into applications, and it's got a lot of different benefits. And um, it's certainly you know industry leading in, in that uh, in that perspective. So. Um, Real quick, you know, I talked a little bit about kind of the different mindsets and the different roles. You've got the CIO, uh, you know, in, in technology who is focused on turning IT into more of a competitive edge. So whether you're using um, digital transformation as a competitive differentiator, or you're, you're trying to, obviously you're trying to protect your investment. And, and uh, now that you are moving into more of a cloud-based model, you need to think about things like, um, security and privacy and, and obviously refocus and repurpose your, your staff. But you are also inundated by day-to-day -day technical debt, uh, the disparate data and apps, inflexible governance, and you know the, the skills gap. So you have to work towards um, how do you make, how do you transform these existing services and skills and leverage maybe the, the, the newer platforms and, and offerings that uh, that we have out there that are much more responsive so that you can be much more responsive to the business uh, community uh, and so and and allow, empower them in such a way that they do not get they don't fall behind uh, and you are really a partner in their success and um, they as a result are not able they are able to compete much more effectively and not get digitally disrupted by another competitor. 
right? So that's kind of the role of the CIO or, you know, chief digital officer, whatever, what have you, those different roles and uh, responsibilities there. On the business side of things, on the LOB line of business, that you obviously more innovation, expand the brand, uh, exploit, exploit is probably not the best word, but really, you know, leverage and get the most out of your partnerships, uh, drive more visibility and, and into not just the business model, but also operations. So that it, perhaps in the case of an uh, order, order management system, if you knew that you were running low on inventory, you would have to, you, you could be a little bit more proactive in ordering a new batch versus having to react to the, this notion that you are out of inventory. And that's why the customer might potentially go somewhere else, right? So, uh, and so you are slowed by, you know, the business is traditionally slowed by the inability to scale standalone initiatives and protecting this intellectual cap, cap, uh, capital which is this idea that all of this information is mine and I don't want to expose that and rightfully so, but there are things that we can do in IT to make sure that your data is very well protected. And so definitely talk to us uh, at Kelton because we have a great team of experts that help you not just with integration, but with um, you know digital reference architectures from a data point of view as well. And so we need, uh, the business needs more integration, and be able to implement lightweight, fast, responsive governance with IT and consume APIs via basically self-service. So if Praveen needs to, if, if somebody needs to find out if Praveen has a peanut allergy, you may not necessarily have to download Praveen's entire medical record. You just need to be able to perhaps create uh, an interface or an API that extracts just if Praveen uh, has a peanut allergy. So that's the kind of level of customization that we're we're headed to because remember, remember as we go forward, the mobile uh, phenomena is also uh, going to play a very critical role is you're gonna have to do a lot of this computing on your phone. So you're gonna need lightweight REST services and, and integration protocols that can talk to those backend uh, systems and, and not clog up uh, your, um, you know, your, your bandwidth. So because now you are not as close to the, uh, the the bandwidth pipe um, and you're accessing a lot of this information and functions and features of the business on your phone, you're also going to need to have um, applications and services be much more responsive. So integration plays a key role. Um, and, and, and that's one of the big value propositions. So with, remember with, with uh, IIB, um, it's, some of the core functions that, that we, we see there is that it's simple to, to develop within, deploy, manage, and migrate integration solutions. It's fast, it's got market leading performance, uh, universal and independent connectivity, lets you save cost by automating and simplifying, um, you know, and re reducing your custom coding that might be involved, get, giving you more speed. Um, and helping you with, you know, uh, testing capabilities, things of that sort, right? So there's no vendor lock-in. The open standards leadership for integration is, you know, the, as far as technology, it's, it's a neutral platform that works on the, the, the widest range of possibilities. And it, it has, it gives you high value built-in features that help you uh, leverage and, and extend the value uh, as, uh, as well. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, what are, you know, obviously the, the latest feature in I, IBM IIB is version 10. This is a significant step forward from version nine, which was released back, a, I think in March, 2015. And it provides major enhancements in terms of the experience as well as capabilities. So um, these, this slide kind of talks a little bit about what those might be, uh, but I'm gonna focus a little bit on some of the things that are perhaps uh, more predominant in what customers are either interested in or what the technology purists find are, um, you know, are things that are, are preventing um, and are accelerating their, their pace of delivery as practitioners. So really, I mean, the, the installation process is much more simplified. You can get IIB version 10 installed within minutes, uh, not a very complicated install. Uh, Traditionally, IBM MQ um, 
was a prerequisite, now it's not. So it gives you that core dependency of relying on having to have NQ there is no longer there. You have, excuse me, an enhanced web user interface, more options for processing pub and, you know, publish and subscribe integrations, uh, certainly new connectors uh, out there as well, which we'll, we'll dive into a little bit later. Uh, and then the connector framework, uh, as well as patterns and samples that are stored on, on GitHub, and also IID in, in the cloud. So a lot of our customers are also inquiring about, you know, this notion that, look, I maybe I'm considering buying IBM IIB. It's, you know, an industry-leading product. It does what it does, but I don't have a staff. Uh, I don't have a very big staff. I'd like to see if I can leverage uh, its features and functionality on the cloud, perhaps because I want to save on some administrative types of costs, right? But I still want to be able to maybe, and you know, save some cost. But also maybe there's um, the other aspect of it, which is that maybe uh, the technology organization or leadership team would like to start small, right? We always hear of, you know, think big, start um, small, and, and uh, move fast, execute fast. So, this notion that you, you can leverage an instance on the cloud and use it on a subscription-based model in terms uh, is it's a pretty pretty good phenomena because you only pay for what you use. And if, if you get to the point where you need to now expand your operations or your hardware and infrastructure, things of that sort, have more capacity, have more horsepower to meet customer demand, then you then, then IBM takes care of, of um, you know, helping you with that. So instead of having your staff be inundated with fix packs and upgrades and things of that sort, you sort of allow IBM to, to manage that for you um, or IBM business partners. And then you as uh, the innovation and you're, you can continue to focus on innovation and core business models, okay? Um, so in terms of data route, routing and key IBM, uh, transformation cases, you'll find that, um, you know, the most common use cases for IBM integration bus center around uh, routing and data transformation, which means what? Which means changing data from one form into another and sending it around different applications depending on the content. So I may have an application that produces, um, uh, you know, an XML format that I'd like to convert into a different format, or I'd like a uh, you know, a much more fast-paced digital application uh, that talks to a back-end, you know, COBOL or KIC system. And so that's one of the, the primary so use cases. So obviously this involves modernization of existing interfaces and, and um, you know, exposing new and exciting interfaces on top of your existing applications. This, uh, this sort of approach gives you gives maybe the, the more traditional applications new ways of connecting in and around consumers uh, and still take advantage of that those services, right? So that's, um, that's one. The second data routing and transformation use case is file. File processing is extremely common in organizations and roughly about 80% of data transfer is done using file. That's huge when you think about that number, that but percentage is 80% is significant. So it, it makes very good sense. Um, uh, it, it, it makes a very good use case for IBM integration bus. More specifically, uh, it's really about bringing together the batch world, right? Your traditional batch world and the online world. So many IT systems have been built upon over decades to run uh, batch mode and many organizations are facing these challenges to bring those systems into a world that is now much more online. So how do we bridge that gap? So you know that's why bridging those worlds is, is a very common case uh, use case for for IIB. Um, then you've got ERP systems, right? So ERP systems such as SAP, Siebel, um, I don't know, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, and so on are undeniably right the, the best of breed software and extremely popular. However, Having said that, one particular challenge of using an ERP system is that they, they tend to create these islands of data. So it can be very difficult to extract that data out of an ERP system and, and make them available in a wider range of IT systems that inside organizations uh, can, 
can now harness, uh, can access, can harness, can develop insights from, um, et cetera. So, you know, so getting data from those systems and synchronizing it with other systems is, is also a common use case. And, you know, this is, this is probably, um, you know, when you think about database integration, that really has two broad forms, right? So first, firstly, SQL interface modernization allows new applications to take advantage of the data that's stored in interfaces without actually having to, for them to understand SQL. And secondly, minimizing failures caused by this, this um, multiple data duplication scenarios. So data information can exist in multiple places and ensuring that data is adequately synchronized is a common, is also a common integration use, space, use case. Finally, making your IT environment platform agnostic. What does that mean? This means that regardless of the skills and technology biases that perhaps maybe, you know, your programmers might have or, you know, whatever, right? They have access to a full range of data that's inside your organization. And, and that's key uh, because it's, it's that data that is from which you are able to make good decisions and develop operational insights. Uh, and with, with the promise of, of data and analytics, you not only have um, predictive analytics and traditional analytics that we've had, but you have the, uh, this notion of using um, cognitive and AI-based services to now tap into that data, understand it, and repurpose it in such a way where it's actually being used to make decisions uh, catering towards um, new revenue models and helping you guide those decisions in much more informed ways and much more proactive ways than we are traditionally used to, or the opposite of that, which would be a reactive approach, okay? Um, this, um, so, but, so we talked about kind of what is the use cases of IIB and uh, integration bus, a lot of different use cases, but it's, it's more than just routing and transformation, right? You can use IIB to create, manage, and socialize APIs. Uh, you can use it for mobile and device integration, apply security and policy enforcements to provide integration for business processes and management solutions. So in many cases, IIB is central, performs a central role and as the backbone or the hands and legs routing operations, if you will, to like a business process management um, application or solution. Um, so, do you build an application that a BPM uh, process calls, which performs the same action, or do you have BPM uh, then leverage the power of data transformation and routing from IIB uh, and then move on to the next step in the business process? So really a great, um, great set of products that are working together. It also enables better cloud integration, allows you to understand and fine tune your system workloads. The better you want to get a sense of what is being transformed, what is being routed, what is uh, being connected. If you're able to monitor that in an intelligent way, you can say, oh, well, this application seems to be under a lot of use because these products are being, uh, they are of more, greater interest. So do we need to develop a greater capacity, greater speed? All those types of analytics come from, you know, gaining that insight, if you will, right, from the business data. And then you can also use IIB to act upon business rules and to apply analytics to in-flight data. Um, so these are some, uh, you know, additional features that, and, and functions that can be done with, with IIB. Um, I think this slide basically talked a little bit about um, some of the different versions, but I think the main thing really I wanted to point out was, I think, and I'll show you a little bit of a demo towards the end, um, is that there are different versions. You know, the first version of uh, IIB version 10 was released in 2005. Since then, there have been multiple different versions. Uh, actually, my slide is not showing a complete, um, the, the, there was a box here. It's not showing that. I think one of the animations is, is not working. But I will say that um, in version 10.0.0.7, which was released in Q4 of 2016, you're really starting to see a lot of the different nodes and features such as Kafka, you know, hybrid connect policies and 
sending, being able to send logs to Cabana dashboards and, and pre-built, you know, um, Dockerized images onto the Bluemix platform, for for example. So that slide, this slide talks uh, a little bit to to that and kind of what the evolution has been, um, and that was really the purpose of that. Oh, here we go. It's working now. Great. Um, so what I did was I highlighted what I thought were some of the newer features in 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 the different versions. And I'll show you in my, my demo a little bit in a few minutes here. Um, what, were, what was kind of some of the evolution? So even with the older versions, you had REST API integration with API Connect. Um, you know, that's IBM's API management product and platform. Uh, you were able to create REST APIs without Swagger in 10.0.4. JSON support schema, uh, Salesforce request nodes. So a lot of these different version for MQ version nine, uh, support for YAML support and Swagger, Kafka producer and consumer nodes. You know, as you know, as you know, Kafka is um, it's a streaming um, it's it's a streaming distributed platform. So provides lets you pr publish and subscribe to a stream of records. Uh, more for you know basically to be able to build real-time streaming streaming data pipelines. So uh, big, it's a big interest nowadays uh, with so much data being generated and how do you make the most of uh, understanding that data? So uh, Kafka runs as a cluster on one or more servers and allows you to basically store those those streams of records and uh, categories of what they what they call topics. And so. Uh, and then in version eight, um, you have, you know, IBM Cloud product insights for Bluemix, asynchronous callable flows. So a lot of different, you know, new features that are being added uh, and really makes a, a very compelling case to, to certainly take a look at um, IIB uh, version 10. So whether you have an older version or are kind of looking to see what's out there and what's new or if you already have IIB, and you want to see, well, what else can I do to get the most out of my investment? Certainly, these are good things to be aware of and, and um, keep, in, keep in mind. Um, OK, so having said that, I would like to now um, showcase uh, quickly uh, the demo. And I'll just show you a quick demo. Um, And Justin, if you could, can you just confirm that you still see my my screen? Yes, it's perfect, Pravin. Thank you. Thank you very much. So real quick, um, I'm going to show you two small demos. Um, I'm going to show you one that helps you route messages to, you know, MQ series. Uh, IBM MQ series is uh, IBM's world-class and enterprise-grade messaging platform for message-oriented middleware. Uh, so we have nodes such as uh, MQ. But this is really IIB, right? The integration development environment. So this is my IIB integration toolkit. And on the left side, I have basically an Eclipse-based IDE. The perspective that I'm in right now is that of an integration developer. And I have on here to the right of my application development palette, I have a various set of connectors and adapters, nodes, what have you. So I can choose from Webster and Q, the different nodes I'm interested in there. Uh, MQTT, Kafka, as I spoke to about earlier, JMS, uh, HTTP nodes, REST nodes. Um, you know, there's so many different, uh, you know, connectors and adapters that I can use here. Here's a common set of WebSphere adapters that I, I could also leverage. So WebSphere allows, uh, perhaps can allow me to connect to different systems like SAP, Siebel, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft. Those are uh, very important. So if you want to save time and development costs, you've got .NET connections. In terms of transformation, you know, very powerful XSLT, Java compute, compute nodes, XSLT performance nodes. You have different callable flows, loopback connectors, also database um, uh, connectors. You have file, you know, email, email protocols, CORBA, right, as well as, you know, business decisions, you can leverage a decision service uh, as well. Um, you know, security, I mean, what have you. There's just so much out here in terms of what you are able to accomplish that it's, uh, it's really a phenomenal product. And, uh, you know, IBM has, 
IB, IBM IIB has been in the industry and has been a leader in this market segment for close to 20 years. So there's no, there's no, um, I think, shortage of, of expertise and its ability to prove itself as a product. Um, I think over 400 healthcare, I think I was reading a study the other day, that over 400 healthcare, um, you know, corporations use IIB uh, and use that as a central backbone um, for the data routing and transformation purposes. So, um, so in this scenario, I have, uh, I've got a couple of nodes here. Um, so the MQ input node, uh, if I go in, you'll, you'll notice that I have that pointing to PKCQM, that's short for Praveen Kumar Chingani Q Manager. Uh, I know, not very creative, but, you know, keeps life simple. Um, I have various different options that I can configure here, the validation, the security, but I've established uh, a queue manager and I've defined queues uh, that I can route to. And I'm going to run this and put a message uh, by deploying on IBM's Webster MQ manager. So hopefully, okay, great. So that is um, setting that up to send a message. I'm going to send a message. Um, and the message, the content of my message is uh, Praveen, October, we're going to do this 11th, today's 11th message, 007. And we're going to send that message across. And as you can see, my message has been, you know, sent, sent through. And when you come here, notice how my, uh, I'm now I'm in MQ series, uh, MQ Explorer. I'm looking at my current queue depth. And notice how a message has been placed on, on the queue. So that's the kind of data routing you'll notice. What was the put time, put and date time that was right now, 11.47 a.m. That's the message, uh, you know, so I can take a look at this. And when I go into data, you'll notice Praveen October 11th, message 007. Okay, so that's an example of how I can put together a, a, a flow uh, where I can send messages and exchange messages, you know, on, on the queue. Um, there are other examples I can show you, but I think in the interest of time, uh, I'm going to, you know, pause at this time. Let me see if I can quickly show you one more. Um, I have an integration service here that I have temperature converter. So let's quickly do a, uh, a nifty experiment. Okay, so hold on. Sorry about that. I'm going to quickly show you. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to go to weather.com and do a temperature check. Uh, I'm based out of Chicago, Illinois. So let's take a look and see what's the weather today in Chicago, Illinois. Okay, well, this is taking a little longer, so apologize. But I think it's around 58 degrees, so it's getting colder in Chicago. So I'm going to close this tab. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in my in my demo is I'm going to uh, try and I have a, a mapping node here where I map Fahrenheit to Celsius. So if you have an operation that is across the U.S. and the Canada, uh, you would want people, the audience in Canada, the customers, to be able to see temperatures in Celsius versus Fahrenheit, like we do in the U.S. So I'm going to run this uh, and. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, click on that. Sometimes it takes a little while. I'm going to push a message, uh, and I have already an input message that I've defined here. And I'm going to say um, 58 degrees is the Fahrenheit, and I want that converted into Celsius. So um, if we did that, I'm going to send that message. Message flow deployment successfully completed. Um, and I have various parameters there that, it, that it's going through. Uh, and you'll see, so it starts the, the flow. And if you look at the payload, the message payload uh, right now, we scroll down a little bit. So hopefully it's done the conversion. Um, and here is the reply. So if you look at in the response, the reply payload, you see that 58 degrees Fahrenheit was converted to Celsius as 14.445, you know, okay? So that's another example of how I can build flows, subflows, 
Um, and the way it's done is you define an integration service, you have a particular SOAP or an HTTP binding, and then, so let me just get out of, um, I'm gonna go back to my edit mode, and I'm gonna show you, so you take a look at uh, the Fahrenheit to, um, these are different nodes and mapping mappings that I have created that allow me to accomplish that. So there's so much tremendous amount of integration that can be done. This was just for the purposes of a demo, I wanted to show you this, but um, without further ado, I'm going to now yield back to Justin and I wanna thank everybody for taking the time to attend this webinar. Sorry, we, we ran over a few minutes and uh, over, over to you, Justin, thank you. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, that's really uh, an interesting demo and uh, hope the audience uh, find this session informative, uh, especially, you know, uh, uh, the differences between the traditional and uh, hybrid uh, architecture. And uh, so before we wrap up, uh, you know, we have some quick questions from the audience. Uh, uh, audience, thanks for being attentive all through the session and uh, uh, thanks for your patience as well. Uh, sorry for uh, being running out of tough time, but uh, uh, let's uh, take up some quick uh, uh, interesting questions that I have uh, from the audience. Uh, Pravin, here is the first one. Uh, Habit asks, uh, what kind of uh, cloud solution deployment options are available for IAB version 10.4? Thanks, uh, Justin. Good question. Before I answer that question, real quick, IAB, uh, is offered in two different modes. It's the on-prem version, which I showed you today, uh, but also a cloud-based model, so you can, uh, you know, have access to uh, IIB on cloud as well. Um, so, but in terms of uh, cloud solution and deployment options, certainly IIB version 10 has multiple cloud deployment options, such as deployment paths to uh, what we call infrastructure as a service uh, model frameworks. That, and these include certainly uh, IBM Bluemix uh, built on software layer, excuse me, soft layer, uh, Microsoft Azure, as well as Amazon Web Services. Um, so definitely a lot of different options uh, in terms of uh, deployment paths. Thank you. And Pravin, we have one last question. Uh, so are there any business monitoring tools available in IIB? Oh yeah, definitely. IIB applications can definitely be configured to have message flows that, for example, ev emit events. And uh, those messages can then be used to support transaction monitoring, transaction auditing, business process monitoring. So once that event emission configuration is done, you can start to integrate it with other IBM products like WebStream Business Monitor and sort of even customize your dashboards and the monitoring of key performance indicators and, and related KPIs. So definitely, good question. Well, thank you very much, Praveen, and thank you very much, audience, for taking time out, out of your day and uh, joining us on this session. And uh, yeah, and uh, Praveen, uh, you know, you might want to uh, announce about our upcoming webinar on uh, IBM Blueworks Live. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for the for the reminder. We do have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, another great offering and webinar series also coming to you from Kelton Tech. Uh, it's going to be focused on business process modeling and architecture. That's on November 11th, excuse me, November 3rd. Um, I believe it's also from 11 a.m. Uh, Central to 11 uh, 30, so it's a shorter webinar, 30 minutes, but it'll, you know, if you're excited about how you're starting to look at your business models and process architecture and how that then ties into your enterprise reference architecture, please definitely uh, take a look. It's a little bit more focused on the business and line of, um, line of business types of roles, but we're going to talk about um, IBM Blueworks Live and the, and the phenomenal product that that, uh, the features and functions that that, that um, comes and the services that Kelton offers as far as process discovery and IBM BPM automation orchestration, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely look forward to that. It's called IBM Blueworks Live on November 3rd at 11, uh, at 11 a.m. Central. Thank you.
Great. Thank you, Pravin. And uh, audience, I will be dropping your personal note uh, with the recording and presentation as well uh, the registration link for our upcoming webinar on BlueWorks Live. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time today and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.